This is the Dirichlet function. Well, kind of. It's well defined everywhere along the real line, which means that for every x value you put in, you get a single output, and that output will be either 0 or 1. The thing is, this function isn't continuous anywhere on the real line. In the 1820s, Peter Gustave Lejeune de Richelieu was thinking about what happens to Fourier series at discontinuities. Fourier series, the idea that an infinite sum of trigonometric functions converges to a function, was only about 15 years old at the time, and what happened at points where the functions jumped up or down wasn't clear. Then, in 1829, de Richelieu found the answer. If some piecewise continuous function, f of x, has a discontinuity at point x0, then its Fourier series converges to the average of the limit as f of x approaches x0 from the left and from the right. For example, if we have this square wave function, which is minus 1 for x less than 0 and plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 0, its Fourier series converges to 0 at x equals 0, exactly halfway between the left and right limits. Dirichlet then went on to question what kind of function doesn't fit the criteria of piecewise continuous, one not continuous on any interval, one that Fourier series wouldn't work for. This was a particularly genius insight, since at that point in time, no one knew that such a function could exist. No one had described one. For a function to be nowhere continuous, you have to be able to choose any x value, and the limit as f of x approaches that value has to fail from both sides. That means it has to jump up and down in some non-smooth way however close you get to x. But de Richelieu found one. He says consider a function phi of x that's equal to a constant c when x is rational and a different constant d when x is irrational. Usually we say c is equal to 1 and d is equal to 0. Proving this is nowhere continuous isn't too difficult. First, between any two rational numbers, there exists an irrational number. Consider two rational numbers m over n and r over s, and suppose r over s is greater than m over n. Take the difference between them, that's r over s minus m over n. Now we know that m over n plus this difference will give us back r over s. But if we multiply it by something less than 1 first, it will give us something in between. So, for example, root 2 over 2 is about 0.7. And that's the proof, we have something in between the two rational numbers, which is a rational number plus an irrational number times a non-zero rational number. So this number is irrational. Okay, now let's prove that between any two irrational numbers, there's a rational number. Let's let our irrational numbers be a and b, with a less than b. They both have some infinite decimal expansion. At some point, there'll be a digit where they differ. Now, consider a third number x, which is the same as b, up to and including the first digit where it differs from a, but truncated afterwards. x is between a and b, and because it has a finite decimal expansion, it's rational. So, going back to the Dirichlet function, as it's now called, which equals 1 when x is rational, and 0 when x is irrational. Since between any two irrational numbers there are rationals, and between any rational numbers there are irrationals, the Dirichlet function can't be continuous anywhere on the real line, and it was the first function of this kind to be described. Also, since both the rationals and the irrationals are dense on the real line, that is, any interval, no matter how small, contains both rational and irrational numbers, we can't even say that the Dirichlet function oscillates up and down. There's just no concept of the next number on a continuum. The best I can do is say it's kind of both of these lines. In fact, restricting the Dirichlet function to either just the rationals or just the irrationals gives you a constant function. It becomes continuous. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.